Okay, so tell us who you are. Uh, my name is Kim. I'm a graduate student, um, and I'm in Judith Kimball's lab at the University of Wisconsin um, in the Department of Biochemistry. So tell me about where you've traveled in your life. <laughs> so I actually, um, my parents are very into road trips, and I've been to 46 out of 50 states. So one of my favorite memories um, is we were in Arches National Park, which is in Utah, and um, there was like a lightning storm, but we only had a couple of hours to see the park, and then we were planning on driving on to like the next destination. Um, so we got out of the car and we're walking around and just like checking things out. And there's meanwhile like a lightning storm going on. We definitely should not have been outside at all. And then when we were looking at photos later, we could see our hair is standing on end. <laughs> How do you think you compare to the stereotypical scientist that people often picture? <laughs> well, I'm pretty nerdy and I make a lot of nerdy jokes. So many times you're asked, oh, why did you decide to be a scientist? And really the only good answer that I have is that I'm just really curious about how the world works. And I have a lot of questions and I wanna work to answer them. I don't have the like touching story about my, my grandfather with some medical condition. I, it, I've never experienced a story like that um, that has motivated me to do science. And maybe someday I will um, and it'll come full circle in that way. But for now, I just wanna learn about the world. When you're not being a scientist, <laughs> how do you unwind? So I've recently um, picked up this hobby of growing pottery, doing ceramics, and so I really enjoy that. Um, it's something very different from science where it's all very mechanical and your hands just know what to do. You can kind of just like check out and make really beautiful things. So this the only thing I have here that I made is this pencil cup. So I just did some carving. But <laughs> Do you ever play any instruments or sports? All through school, I played the cello. Um, I have my cello here with me in Madison. However, I've played it maybe twice in the last year. I was on a synchronized skating team with like 15 other people. Like all the people on the ice synchronized together? Yeah, we all wow. did the same like kick line type stuff. I think okay. like rock hats but on ice skates. <laughs> what to you is the most difficult part about being a scientist? There can be a lot of times where things aren't working. Um, I'm working on a project that ha is, is very open-ended, and so I might try something, and for months it won't work, and then all of a sudden it does. Um, and that time when it's not working can be really frustrating. Um, but the moment that it does work, it's very rewarding and, and sort of makes up for all that miserable like purgatory of <laughs> failure. So what do you research here anyway? So um, I study a tiny worm, it's a round worm. If you went outside and dug up some dirt, you'd probably find something resembling this worm. There's a, a group of cells in the organism that's, that are stem cells. And so these stem cells, like I said, they can become any other cell in the organism. And that process of going from stem cell to another cell is called differentiation, another type of cell. But that population of stem cells, in order for it to be maintained, it needs to also make more stem cells. And so that process is called self-renewal, and that's what I study. Um, and there's a specific um, protein, which is just something in a cell that does a job. We don't know what that job is yet, and I'm trying to figure it out. What is important to you about science? Scientists aren't necessarily just the big famous people that win Nobel Prizes there's a lot of humans on the ground in hundreds of labs, even probably thousands, easily thousands of labs around the country. The tangible gains that people see as successes of science, like, oh, a new vaccine, or a new treatment for your least favorite disease, um, those aren't possible without that whole workforce of people um, around the country doing little seemingly small tasks to build up into a bigger goal without basic science research. Um, it's not, it's a lot of times not possible. And funding basic science research is incredibly important for those um, very tangible human health advances. You also teach, right? I teach a biochemistry, um, it's for biochem majors, um, and they're all seniors, it's their capstone lab course. The lab is a lot of fun because, um, unlike a lot of other undergraduate classes, um, 
you're sort of guiding the students through troubleshooting an experiment rather than just listing facts and saying this is what you should have learned in lecture. It's more of like a problem solving um, exercise than it is a memorization exercise and I really like that. So what it's like to be a scientist isn't what it's like to take a science class at all. Um, yes, you need to know the facts and you need to be able to remember them, um, but it's so much more than that. There's so much more, um, like you mentioned, problem solving um, that happens on a day-to-day -day basis and, and troubleshooting things and trying to figure out why uh, the result that you expected isn't what you got. Trying to end your two months of purgatory. Yeah, to... exactly. <laughs> Kim, thank you very much for joining yeah, us today. Yeah, definitely. It was a lot of fun. <laughs>